Well, here we are again. I know that I said that I wasn't going to make much more Slipknot content unless something really big happened or some drama happened, but we couldn't even make it to the end of 2023. Some big drama happened. For those of you that aren't aware for some reason, Slipknot fired their drummer. No, not that drummer. The other one. The new one. Jay Weinberg. They got rid of him. There's been a lot of questions about why, what happened, and uh, just like last time, and kind of just like usual, everybody in the Slipknot subreddit has been making their typical less than ingenious assumptions and extremely emotionally driven rage posts. So um, before I get into the what the actual available information is, we're going to do a quick rundown of sort of the uh, most common claims that show up on the subreddit and just in general in the Slipknot community about this situation uh, that the fan base makes over and over and over and over again. And the first one being that uh, Corey and Clown, as I described in the video about Joey, are basically Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader. Uh, they're evil. Their only uh, purpose at this point in the band is to fire people, collect as much money as possible, and to cause suffering the globe over. Besides Clown and Corey, the rest of the band are just disposable hires, disposable guns, who can be just gotten rid of for any moment, any reason, at any time whatsoever. That could be because uh, Mick decides to get off the bus and he farts and it smells particularly bad that day. You know, they got to get rid of him. They make a post about it. It lasts for a few hours. They lock the comments. Everyone loses their minds. And then they take the post down, which makes everyone lose their minds even harder. Next, we got that uh, the fans all believe that the band is no longer a brotherhood as once described, you know, like in 1999 when everyone was 20 years old. And now it's just become... Warning on this, it's become a business. I know, terrifying, the prospect of a business entity, but um, some of you may or may not be aware, but bands have to function as businesses in order to do things like figure out what position everyone holds and how much what their salary is going to be and what we're deducting and what our time, about. you know, business stuff. Evil. Um, the last one is basically that um, Jay was universally loved. Uh, he was the perfect drummer to replace Joey. Pretty flawless. Fans loved him. He loved everybody. He was just a kid whose dream had come true. And Clown and Corey flew in on their, I don't know, whatever demons fly in on. And stole this dream away from him and stomped it out right in front of him. Until he cried. And then they probably did it even harder. So those are kind of the basic things that everybody's been posting on the subreddit as far as what's gone down thus far. What this is based on, I don't know. There may be some weird version of the Slipknot subreddit 8 ball somewhere you can buy and it just tells you those things over and over again. Or these are all bots and they're just posting these. I don't know, but we're going to get into them. So, speaking of the Slipknot subreddit, we're going to peruse on over there and uh, take a look at some comments that I gathered. Just to sort of demonstrate what's being said, it's more or less kind of what I just described. First one we got here, it's a paycheck party for Corey and Clown. They're the Gene and Paul of the modern day. For those of you unaware, that means like Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, they're in Kiss, regardless of what your opinion on Kiss is. Both these dudes are so full of themselves in interviews, I'm convinced it's only a matter of time before one of them is caught on camera huffing their own farts South Park style. I'm not going to lie, that's kind of funny. A, a paycheck party. I'm a, I'm a little confused about that one. Is there, a, is there a clause in their contracts that states that every time that they're, um, I was going to say kill death ratio, but their higher fire ratio changes, they get like a fat bonus. So everybody's getting extra paid right now because they just fired the second person in 2023. I don't know. But really, it doesn't make sense because they're going to have to hire a ninth member again and go back to splitting uh, everything that they make nine ways anyway, regardless of what the distribution is between those nine members. I know we're mad at Slipknot right now, but um, come on, guys. Don't you think it's a little low to call them Kiss? Like, slow. Calm down. Jeez. Really? As far as huffing, the, like, huffing your own farts, I don't know if you guys were around like in the early days, but like Slipknot huffed all kinds of awful things on stage. Like rotting carcasses and jars and, and and things like that. So I don't think huffing their own farts is going to be that big of a step for them. It's probably actually a significant upgrade, if I had to guess. 
and you know they've been farting on each other in close quarters for like 20 plus years they probably have an immunity to farts uh, the next comment we got is classic greed greed is what's going on here i love slipknot the Korean clown know their performing days are numbered and that's because of their you know the condition of their bodies they're in their like 50s guys come on uh, so they're trying to make as much money as f possible for themselves before it all ends. Remember what Corey said in that interview. We really don't make that much money. Um, it's kind of a silly thing for Corey to say. I don't know what his definition of much money is, but he, I think he's doing okay. And I think the rest of the guys in the band are doing okay. Even the uh, disposable mercenary hired gun nobodies or whatever. They're probably doing okay too. Shout out V-Man. You really, you seem like a cool guy. Are they really expecting a huge jump in pay? You know, trying to get in as much as possible just because they can, Jay? I doubt it. I guess it's technically possible. I don't know the ins and outs of their business contracts. But, um, you know, why not fire everybody except for Clown and Corey? And then we can have some ending that's kind of like John Carpenter's The Thing. It's just like Clown and Corey sitting together at the end waiting for one to get the other one. But we don't know which one it's going to be. Anyway, whoever made this post, I sincerely hope that this person is, like, uh, really young. Like, yeah. I just... I just for obvious reasons. Next comment. Jay <laughs> revived the band after Joey left and they kick him out too? I already didn't care about the new members that came after Jay and V-Man. Tortilla Man and Zipper Man or whatever his name. Just don't do it for me. The this on Tortilla. Shame. Guess now I won't give a <laughs> about half the band. So... Was the band just dead before Jay joined? Were they going to, like, hang it up? I must, have, I must have entirely missed that news. Did they, like, hire the drummer from ACDC and he just went on every song? And they were like, well, we got nobody. So Jay came in and then, oh, my God, that's a double bass beat. We're good now. Slipknot's a band again. Yeah, I don't think that's what happened. I'm pretty skeptical on that one. Also, uh, as far as Jay reviving the band, you might want to go check the songwriting credits on the last three records and see, uh, you know, who did what on uh, each of the albums. And it'll give you a good idea of, like, who's uh, keeping the band alive. Just a, just a pro tip there. I'm not going to spoil it for you. I'll, let you. I'll let it be exciting. Sorry you don't like the band anymore, but, um, you know, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Next comment. Clown and Corey ran that band into the ground, getting rid of Chris, Craig, Jay on top of the way that they treated Joey when he got sick. Refer to my Joey video. I love the band, probably my favorite band, but they made it a company. Here we go again. If it's not an evil business, it's an evil company. Those sound suspiciously similar, don't they? Mm -hmm. That. Kind of going back to the Joey thing, if you still buy into the Joey got kicked out because he was sick and no one ever understood that and that was never communicated to anyone in the band, so they fired like the most popular metal drummer on the planet that everyone loved over a medical misunderstanding, A, might want to think about that for about 30 more seconds and then B, go watch my other video about what probably happened to Joey, which is actually going to come back later in this video, so uh, stay tuned. Basically, the short version of that, though, is that we have a lot of evidence for what actually probably happened, but I'm not going to spoil it for you yet. Just stick around, like I said. Also, if I give you an actual explanation containing all the words involved in that explanation, YouTube is just going to hit me with the axe in this video will before it's born. Uh, next comment. Yup, they turned the band into a merch farm now, which is ironic considering the whole barcode symbol was a jab at bands doing the same thing. I don't even really remember if that's true or not, but I don't remember the history of the barcodes that well. I know it's a barcode on one of their records. Hey, buddy, the guy that wrote this post, I don't worry that I want to ruin the magic for you, but like, um, straight from the paths drummer, Craig Reynolds once said, also an award-winning podcaster. What's up, Craig? Bands are basically just t-shirt shops. If you've never been in a band or, or like tried to make money in a band, most of a band's money comes from performing in merch. A lot of it from merch. So, uh, you're kind of making the music to hype people up to buy your t-shirts. Statement doesn't really mean anything. Obviously, they're trying to say that it's just about money now. And you already know how I feel about that. And I don't want to go over this all over again. So we're just going to go over the other one. Also, like, there's nothing wrong with making money. And if you think that, I can't wait for you to turn 12 years old this year. Next comment. Jay was the perfect drummer for Slipknot. As a drummer myself, ever since he's joined the band, I've maintained that he's a better drummer than Joey. Perhaps not as talented as a, of a composer, but Joey was sloppy. Joey was also my idol growing up, so I've wrestled with his misgivings for a while, but when Jay came in, it all made sense. Jay is the perfect Slipknot drummer. 
He is tight. He's technical. He's fantastic live. Parentheses. Saw Joey once in 2004 and Jay twice in 2014 and 2016. Jay takes the cake. His drumming compositions were perfect for the sound of the band. This is a long-winded response to say that this is a dumb decision, if true. Now, there's a lot of arguing back and forth that's going on about who's a better drummer, if whether it's Jay or Joey. God, could their names be more similar? Seriously. All drummers that play live make mistakes. That's just simple fact. If you play the drums, you make mistakes day to day. Your performance from one day to another can drop so dramatically that it will make you want to quit the drums forever. So drummers just have bad days. Performance varies. Sometimes it's sloppy. Sometimes you rush. Sometimes you drag. It's what happens. Um, when it becomes a problem is this when these factors become a hindrance to the rest of the band and it starts affecting everyone else's performances. I do believe that Joey was a better writer than Jay was, and I'd still probably say that Joey might have been a bit of a better drummer, although recently Jay's blast beats are certainly a lot better than Joey's, so that's kind of a toss-up. I haven't thought about it really that hard. Go listen to the drums, like on volume three. Probably the most inventive, enjoyable, memorable, and fun drum parts ever written for a metal album that reached widespread mainstream success. It's just undeniable. Like, go listen to The Nameless and Welcome and Opium of the People. The drums on those songs are great. Uh, the idea that Jay is a much tighter live drummer, though, is just simply not true. It's so not true that uh, a guy who's referred to, I guess, affectionately by uh, other people in the Slipknot Party as Yeti, was he was Jay's drum tech for uh, it, at least one tour. I don't know how long he was his drum tech for, but he was Jay's drum tech. He took the time to actually comment on one of the posts about Jay's departure in response to a comment that said, bro literally carried the band. And he responded, I can tell you that that is very not true. He struggled very hard live. They had to trigger his kick drums because his double bass playing was terrible. His meter is also very bad, always rushing. They should have did this years ago. As far as the rushing thing, I've noticed this for most of the time that I've watched his live videos of him performing. I've also seen him perform a couple times live. He does rush songs. It's just undeniable. I didn't know how much the band cared about it. I didn't know if they planned it too, but apparently they definitely did not plan it. Next comment from uh, Yeti the Tech. I was his tech. I'm the one who had to put the triggers on his kit. Funny how someone always thinks they know facts from the crowd. His videos he posts are so doctored up. I assume he means his YouTube videos. Those seem like GoPro audio, so I don't know how doctoring those up would go, but, you know, I, who, who knows? Maybe they're doctored up, maybe they're not. So, yeah, that's not a good look for Jay. But that basically confirms that he did have problems playing at tempos that the rest of the band felt comfortable with, that weren't all over the place, uh, that his velocity with his kick hits was inconsistent to the point where other people couldn't hear it and they had to trigger it. So he had some live issues. Side note, I don't have any beef with triggering your drums. I'm not going to get into this decade-old argument that was finished forever ago. There's nothing wrong with triggers. If anything, triggers can actually amplify your mistakes if you're not hitting things in time. Also, Joey's kit was entirely triggered for the last bit of time he spent with the band. All right, so that was only six Reddit comments and two comments on Instagram from a tech. We even have an Instagram comment from number four, Mr. Jim Root himself, about the situation. Obviously, he's not going to be able to say much, but what he does say is still kind of telling. It reads, if doing this stuff we could do was easy, then everyone would do it, could do it. And it's not just writing, playing live, or being creative. There are psychology and interpersonal relationships and any other number of things that can be good and exciting or just be devastating. We've been through a lot and no one would ever understand without walking a mile in our shoes. Have a rad day. I'm going to go play some COD and tune out. On the Call of Duty thing, I don't know about you guys, but Modern Warfare 2 made me rage so much that I actually quit Xbox Live forever and I still have not picked it up. To this day, I'm normally a PC guy. So I hope his Call of Duty session is m more relaxing than that. Uh, more importantly, pay attention to what he says, not related to Call of Duty. He seems to imply that uh, writing and playing were less of an issue, though we do know that the live playing was an issue, and that it was more relationship stuff, probably in between the band members and the crew and stuff like that, if I had to guess. This idea is going to be really important moving forward as we get into what other people have said and what's available. Um, so, why did Jay get fired? 
Another way to sort of figure out what someone's like as a bandmate is if they have a history of having been with other bands, go see what those other bands say about him. Well, for Jay, we've got Madball and we've got Against Me. So if you do a little Google search about Jay Weinberg and Madball, you'll come across an article about how Madball booted him out of the band. If that doesn't sound bad enough, the quote in the article is even worse. So I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Madball says... I'm letting Jay go in Canada because I just feel like he doesn't represent this band on a character level. It would go against my own code of ethics to keep him in the band. Not saying he's a bad drummer, I won't take that away from him, but the reality is he has a lot to learn about paying dues and about life in general. Granted, he is a kid, but I'm not so sure he'll ever be built for this particular lifestyle. I wish him the best of luck, but the Madball machine rolls on okay wow that's that's so let's break this down into three different components one he doesn't represent the band on a character level that's a pretty deep indictment of someone second thing it would go against the band's code of ethics for him to just remain in the band there was some sort of character conflict that was so deep that people felt as if their very life principles were being violated if he remained in the band the third one is Jay needs to learn to pay his dues. And then he makes a comment about him being a kid. Normally what this means is that someone shows up somewhere and they start making demands and having expectations that they have absolutely no right to make because they haven't earned any of those things. This is also something that's going to come back later. So we're off to a rough start, guys. Remember, the, the guys in Madball didn't know that he was going to join Slipknot. That, that happened later. So th this is like old news. They said this a little while ago. Everyone that's watching right now that's about to start typing or has already started typing the those guys are just jealous because he joined Slipknot. Stop. And um, if you were doing that, I'm a little worried about like, you know, your future and your basic ability to put the right shape plastic box and like the right shaped holes. You know, those old games we played as a kid. You should probably see if you could solve that first and then come back and like make a comment on this video. All right. So we got Madball. Next band we got is Against Me, who fortunately also made comments about Jay after he left, apparently by quitting on Twitter, according to them. So uh, Laura Jane Grace, lead vocalist from Against Me, took to the internet to say, well, a bunch of stuff. The first thing is, Dear Slipknot, good luck with that curse word bag. Ouch. Next. We once had a drummer who sprained his ankle and wanted our tour manager to call 911 and have an ambulance come for him. Hashtag entitlement. I don't know about that one. Maybe his ankle was pretty seriously injured. You ever tried to play double bass with a sprained ankle? It kind of sucks. It's kind of hard. I don't know how bad it was. So I'll leave that one as a, yeah, whatever. Next. We got like three or four more. <laughs> when our tour manager said no, I guess to calling the ambulance, the drummer's daddy, you have to remember, Jay's dad is a famous drummer for the Bruce Springsteen uh, band. The drummer's daddy called him and scolded our manager, saying the drummer was a, quote, star and needed to be treated as such. If that's true, that's horrifically embarrassing, and I probably would have kicked someone out of my band, like, on the spot for that happening. That's, I, I can feel my cringe engaging, and I have to stop it, because otherwise it's going to shut down the video. Next tweet. We once had a drummer who would go behind our back and tell house light people to focus all the stage lights on him. So I'm trying to imagine a stage show going on right now. A metal band's playing. And you can't see anyone on the stage because every single light in the venue is focused on the drum kit. As a drummer, I don't know. That might be kind of cool. I, I always want to see more people playing the drums, which is why I spend like way too much time watching drum videos like Sick Drummer. Their YouTube channel's great. People like that. But yeah, that uh, falls in line with the rest of the claims about his character and like doing his time and all that other stuff. Also embarrassing. Also about to induce some cringe. Next. We once had a drummer who threatened to sue us after he quit via Twitter. I don't know what he was going to sue him for. I don't know. Putting him on blast for quitting via Twitter. Pro tip, guys. Unless your bandmates are really that awful or you feel like you're under threat of violence, you probably shouldn't quit your band over Twitter or leaving a note or anything like that. You probably should just at least call them and tell them. But then again, we also had a president of the United States that issued policy on Twitter. So is it really that big of a deal? Times are changing. I'm just kidding. Final comment from Against Me. We once had a drummer who told me to move aside on stage because the audience couldn't see him enough. 
Also, I'd like to see more of drummers, but like, you know, this is the front woman. Uh, that's not really how light shows work typically, you know, unless you're doing a drum solo or something like that. Telling your vocalist to move aside, like, I just, I can't imagine that happening. But I also can't imagine someone tweeting this to make it up. So, uh, yeah, that's true. Also, that's awful. Uh, either they have major beef that she's just like airing out publicly by posting these things because everyone in Against Me was upset because he decided to jump ship and join Slipknot. But like, there are very few bands I could be in on this planet that I wouldn't immediately leave to jump ship to join Slipknot. So it's like, you know, maybe there are better ways he could tell them. Maybe he couldn't tell them. I don't know. I'm sure it could have been done better than it was based on these sentiments of uh, the vocalist here. But, uh, you know, we'll never know on that one probably. So uh, thus far, the vibe that we're getting is that um, Jay has not been a uh, super great band member for bands to work with for a, a few different reasons. But it seems to be the central theme here is that uh, he has this sense of like, I'm important. I'm entitled to certain things, regardless of how old I am, how long I've been in this band. Don't criticize me about it. Don't tell me when I can and can't play. Don't tell me how hurt I am. I'm going to call my dad if you do something I don't like. Uh, not even the kids in succession want to call their dad when something goes. Do you want to call your dad? I didn't think so. Yeah, exactly. Don't call your dad over stuff like that. It's embarrassing. You're an adult. Stop. How do we know who's, which of these people were telling the truth? Is any of this stuff that they cited correct? You know? Because uh, I'm not going to come on here and just like absolutely slay the guy if I can't like verify any of these claims or whatever. Oh, final note. After he got canned from uh, Slipknot, she uh, came back on her revenge tour to uh, tweet... True poetic justice if he got fired. Oh, does it suck to find out via Twitter, you little... I'm not going to read that. Like I said, is any of this true? How do we know? We need more information. This is all just kind of like he said, she said, I don't like you, you don't like me, blah, blah, blah. But lucky for us, there's been someone, a source, who is will remain anonymous, uh, who's been providing a shocking amount of uh, insider information about uh, you know, stuff that goes on behind the scenes with uh, Slipknot and crew. It's probably a member of the crew, if I had to guess, and not someone that's in the band. I don't think it's uh, someone who's like significant other. No, it's not Stacy, Mick's wife. And on that topic, you guys need to like stop harassing her. Like seriously, the amount of Stacy hatred I've seen on the subreddit is a little. Not even a little, like quite concerning. Some disgustingly anti-woman, anti-feminine, like you name it. Just extremely disturbing comments being made in the Slipknot subreddit against women in general, but particularly a lot of hatred being directed against Stacy simply because she felt like she needed to take to Instagram to try to defend the band members about the decision that they made. Stop. There are ways that you can disagree with her. It doesn't require trashing her, making comments about things that she does because she's a woman and trashing other women. That's just like completely uncalled for. Again, I hope the people posting that are super young uh, and they'll grow out of it. But the fact that even if they are young and they think to say these things is, you know, an indictment of our culture at this point. Yeah. Close your browser. Go outside. Go find something f fulfilling to do if you find yourself doing stuff like that. It's just it's disgusting and it's sad. Back to the excitement. Um, what does this inside source have to say? Uh, I'm not going to post the screenshots of, uh, say, the exact quotes because I don't want to make it easier for people to locate this person. They don't know that I'm doing this or that I'm reading any of these or that I'm talking about this, but it just seems like important. It, it's public, so it's like, you know, it seems like it's important for people to see. I'll probably change a word or two every now and then uh, in some of the quotes, but uh, most of it will be exactly the same. Also, hilariously, one of the things they do comment on is Stacy, and the thing that this person says is that she's basically right about everything that she's posted not only that this person went on to describe her as the closest thing to a band member as far as internal knowledge is concerned she's on every tour in every studio session and always around meg her significant other she's also familiar with the band's legal and business structure and spent over a decade living on the same buses as jay and craig who, uh, you know, we also lost in 2023 before Jay. That aside, the source confirms that the Instagram poster named Yeti, that was the tech, was in fact Jay's drum tech uh, and didn't make any of that stuff up. So Jay was having horrible timing issues. All the band members were complaining about it. They did have to secretly trigger the bass drums so people could actually hear the bass drums. On top of that, I've made a list of all of the most important things that this person talked about. It basically almost makes this an open and shut case for what happened with Jay. The source said that basically chemistry was the issue here. It also referred to Jay as a, quote, 
complete nepo baby. Not not a good not a good start. The Saurus firmly states that if you don't believe that every single band member that's not in the band anymore got extensive attention, multiple offers for treatment of various kinds, all kinds of different kinds of help, interventions, and chance after chance after chance before they were fired, then you're just never going to believe anything that anyone else says besides the fact that Corey and Clown are evil and, you know, whatever. All the stuff that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Also, and this is a really important point that I wanted to make before and I just forgot to, no one in the band wants to fire anyone. You know, in my opinion, the idea that they do is just like so nonsensical that it's just, I can feel just neurons dying in my brain. Like, why? What sense does that make? It's such a massive net negative for the band between like the huge negative press tours, all the fans are losing their mind. They got to find someone else to replace them. They got to teach them all the songs. They got to try to figure out how to keep them anonymous. Why wouldn't you try to exhaust everything to try not to fire somebody? It doesn't make sense why anyone would want to fire somebody. They had Jane the band for 10 years and apparently he got a lot of chances. So yeah, that, that, that just never made any sense. It's just not an adv advantageous business move for the band. It's never going to be. The idea that it is, is is so, so beyond silly. Also, another quote from the guy. Clown and Corey are not pulling the strings. I told you. Going further, I had to dig a little more. Points that he made. Jay was given the opportunity because of who he was. Hence the, you know, that goes back to the Nepo baby thing. He's Max Weinberg's son. So he got the opportunity that way. You guys may have seen the picture of him meeting Slipknot when he was like nine years old. He's loved the band forever. It was like a dream come true sort of situation for him, which is sad to see it end. But, you know, knowing this, like maybe it's less sad. There was another drummer, apparently, that they wanted instead of Jay, but they just weren't able to get. Now, I, me talking, I have a sneaking suspicion about who that is. I'm not going to say would say that I'm like, I don't know, 60% sure just because of some of the things that have happened with the people and bands involved around this person. But if I'm right, they got like arguably one of the best metal drummers on the planet. There's a good case for him being the best metal drummer on the planet. They're, they're going to be fine. It's going to be okay, guys. They'll be okay without Jay Weinberg. Uh, I hope it's this guy. Every time I watch him, his videos, whatever, every time I see him play drums, it's, it's mind-blowing every single time. Invented parts, hits hard. It's, they got the perfect guy if, he, if it's this guy. So... As sort of a wrap up, this is what the story is looking like based on all the testimonies, the comments, the source. Sources include former bandmates for drum tech, a guy that's, you know, anonymous, but clearly worked with the band, goes on tour with them. I don't know how long he's been with them, but important parts. Jay got the job because of who he was and the band went with him. He struggled to play the songs with the tempos that were comfortable with the rest of the band. A point where apparently every band member was complaining about it. They had to secretly kick, uh, trigger his kick drums. Again, don't have any beef with triggers. And Joey did it too. Uh, and I personally don't like the trigger drum sound. It was my least favorite Joey drum sound. Uh, but that's an entirely different subject. There was something about Jay's behavior and personality that did not match the bands. That is why he was fired. Apparently this mismatch was so problematic that it was affecting people's ability to create music and exist as a cohesive unit on tour. Even Jim Root kind of vaguely mentioned to this in his short comment before going back to play Call of Duty Torture Simulator or whatever. Based on what was said, Jay was almost certainly offered numerous opportunities to resolve the issues. I'm sure the band talked to him about it a lot because, again, who wants to fire people? Especially whenever the fans have finally come around and gotten attached to them. And you got people saying stuff like, Jay is a better drummer than Joey ever was and all this other stuff. The band doesn't want to fire people. Stop thinking that. Jay's problems probably had something to do with the way that he treated other people and the expectations that he had. Which is probably why he got called the, you know, the Nepo baby thing. This is verified by, you know, the way that his previous bands talk about him, implying that he was in no position to act the way that he acted and say the things that he said. So again, almost certainly fired because of his attitude, his behavior, the way that he treated other people. So there you have it. That's that's kind of it, guys. It's not really that complicated. It's just we have so little information about this secretive band, and they don't actually come out very often to correct the record or provide specific information. So people just run wild with this stuff. I don't know if you've met people lately, but that can be uh, counterproductive to, to say it at best. But that's not the end of this video. I got whoa, some more juicy stuff for you from the same source. He went ahead and just like threw us a bone on a bunch of different stuff. So I'm gonna go through some of that stuff too, because it's, it's cool to hear. Everyone who has been let go 
everyone. It's not been for musical reasons. It's always been because of behavior problems of many different varieties that went on for years and years and years. And he says, and I mean everyone, Joey, Jay, Craig, um, Chris, behavior problems. All firings have been behavior related. Attitude, addictions, and combinations of the two. Again, referring to my Joey video, I also, I think in that video I talked about how it was more than likely that Chris was also having a hard time staying off drugs and that the band sort of developed a low to no tolerance policy for drug use after uh, the tragic death of Paul. That all checks out. I feel validated. Not that this is, you know, I don't want to celebrate anyone's death or anything, but like, you know, the truth is there. Somebody made a comment about uh, how Slipknot treated Joey by tossing him out over a medical condition because he blah, 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 blah. I went over that in the Joey video again. This guy, however, has come out to back me up. Maybe he just, maybe it's me. Maybe I created this account and I'm just here to like validate myself. He's, he's come to defend me. In response to the idea that Joey was fired over a misunderstanding over a medical condition, he said, this could absolutely not be further from the truth. So... Everybody that's still thinking that, probably not true. On the topic of Craig, only the fans have assumed that Craig left Slipknot on his own. But every person affiliated with Slipknot, that includes bandmates, wives, girlfriends, tech members, crew members, kids, management team. The management team is apparently called 5B. Apparently, they all unfollowed Craig and his wife. I imagine that there's probably some reason for that. Uh, I, I didn't notice it. Props to this guy for pointing it out. Again, behavior problems. Craig was probably fired. Probably had something to do with drugs. Or not being a nice person. Or both. We don't know. But, you know, that's illuminating. The last and my absolute favorite, because I've been wondering about this, and I was pretty sure about who this was, but he just went out and said it for us. Somebody asked why Stone Sour wasn't going to get back together. And his comment was only, because Josh Rand sucks. <laughs> Nobody has named him, but like if you go and listen or read the interviews with Corey and Jim about why Stone Sour is essentially dead, it's because there's one person in the band who show, they always don't name that wants to apparently turn Stone Sour into a pop group. Or, you know, they have creative differences or however they're going to phrase it at the time. Well, as suspected, apparently it's Josh Rand. I don't know if he's terrible to work with too, but he's the reason that we don't have Stone Sour anymore. So everybody go say hi to Josh Rand. Actually, don't do that. Don't go comment on anyone's posts or profiles after watching this video. Absolutely do not. I don't contone it. That's toxic behavior. I don't want anyone in my community doing any stuff like that. That was a joke. Don't do it. All right, everyone. That was a lot to learn from just a little bit of digging. Really, I didn't have to try that hard to find this stuff. I just hung out on the subreddit for a little bit and did some Googling. Like it was probably no more than a few hours worth of stuff in order to put this together. This script is like 3,000 words or something like that. And I've made up half of this. I highly recommend the next time like some big drama goes down with your favorite band or anything else like that. Before you, uh, you know, race off to the comments section or DM somebody or to go to someone's personal page or something like that. Just take a little bit of time to do some Googling. Maybe read some stuff that people that knew this person posted. Uh, just before you totally freak out, because I think if more and more people did that, we'd have a lot more civil discourse, a lot more hatred, a lot less harassment. If I said a lot more hatred, I meant a lot less hatred. The reason I do this is because I have a uh, borderline phobia, like a crippling one, of saying something that's not factually based on the internet. Um, this stuff isn't the kind of thing I can find in a peer-reviewed study, so I'm doing the best that I can. But in my other life, when I'm talking about science, I don't like to ever post anything that I can't verify with peer-reviewed information. I also just think that that's a good policy to have because we have such a big problem with misinformation on the internet these days. It's prevalent even in our music communities, obviously, unfortunately. Also, I was very wrong about a lot of stuff growing up. I figured that out like in my mid-20s. It's not a good feeling whenever you figure out that like stuff that you've been saying forever is not only wrong, but it's probably hurting people. And I had to figure out how to be wrong and to figure out how to not say stuff that was wrong. It's one of the most important things I ever learned how to do. And I think the entire world would appreciate it a little more if everybody just looked a little bit harder to figure out what's the truth about what's going on, about what someone said or what happened or behind the scenes or whatever. And if we can't figure it out, we can't figure it out. It's probably best not to very intensely and with high emotion speculate on things that we can't know. It's just, it would be healthier to be that way. So that's actually uh, all I've got for you. I say that's all I've got for you. Like that wasn't like some 
I don't even know how long this is going to be, but that was a lot of information. But that's all I've got for now. I hope that you guys were at least somewhat entertained. If you're not entertained, I hope you're riled up enough at least to leave a comment about how unentertained and angry you are at me about this. Please let me know regardless of what you think in the comments. Subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. I keep saying I'm going to stop making Slipknot videos, and then it keeps happening for some reason. My life is Groundhog's Day at this point. The entire Iowa album, me screaming it, either on a live stream or a one-take video that will get uploaded. That is still going to happen. I'm sorry I keep saying that. I was going to do it. Some bad medical stuff happened. I was going to do it again. And then I was involved in a bad car accident, and I couldn't scream for a while because I was stuck in bed. I'm okay now. We're going to figure this out. I'll upload a video telling you when it's going to be, and then we can just be done with doing Slipknot stuff all the time. But yeah, more videos to come in the future. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. You know, peace.